Well, hello, and thank you to the organizers for having us. It is an honor to be a part to be part of such a wonderful conference. Just a um, few words about us. Uh, we're a team of four music educators and researchers based in Corfu. Um, that's an island in Greece, but hence the darkness and the jumpers. Um, and under the guidance of uh, Ioana Edmetoglu, who's an uh, associate professor of the Music University of Corfu, we have been uh, introduced to and explored uh, acoustic ecology. So as the title of our presentation shows, the focus of our study is a musical theater play that took place um, in Corfu in 2019 and 2020. In our study, we examined whether the play contributed to any changes in the ways the members of the theater team listened to their local environment. However, be before we discuss the study itself, we'd like to say a few things about the play and of course, its main character, the Swift. So the play is called Swift's The Soundmark of Corfu. Swifts or Apus Apus in, is their, um, in their scientific name as it is, during the summer make their nests in the roofs of the buildings in the old town of Corfu and often fly in large flocks high up in the sky at very high speed. They are known as having weak legs and this is something that is discussed in the play. Also, they produce a characteristic scream, a high-pitched shrill sound. Let's listen to it. Their sound can be considered as a seasonal sound mark of the old town of Corfu. I drew this term from Schaefer, who defined it as a community, I quote, a community sound which is unique or possesses qualities which make it specially regarded or noticed by the people in that community, end of quote. I initially wrote this story about the Swifts in Corfu, which later turned into a play and was performed several times on the Greek island. The reasons for writing the story, apart from an inner need to say something about these birds and make them visible and audible to local residents, is also the belief that songs and other sounds in combination with the story and acting can create strong, stronger identifications between human and non-human communities. Music and sounds can arouse and amplify bodily and emotional reactions. The main characters of the story are the grandfather of the Swifts, called Papus Apus, and a retired biologist called Apus Papus. The two characters, on top of having similar names, also share some qualities and traits, such as a disability, wisdom, and caring for others, and many more. The bird grandfather has legs which under certain conditions may not support his, his taking off from the ground, as all Swifts do. And the old human is in a wheelchair due to his movement disability. Both characters share common experiences of being excluded from human society. It is them, however, who orchestrate in collaboration the solution to the story's problem. The aim of the musical theater play was to, crea to create those conditions which would enable the participants, the theater team members, as well as the audience, to form identifications with the Swifts of Corfu, to feel that they have strong bonds with them when they see and hear them flying in the sky. The play also, also aimed to present disability as a condition that is human as well as other than human. And so the participants would feel that it is society's responsibility to provide accessibility for all 
who are different or disabled. Most performances were attended by nursery and primary school children and their teachers, and some of the performances had a mixed audience. This study is centered around three core ideas. Firstly, the necessity for an ecological worldview in which human superiority is questioned and human beings coexist with other than human beings. Secondly, attentive listening to the human and other than human world as an act that brings awareness of the self, the society, and its very soundscapes. And thirdly, training individuals to listen as an educational, ecological, and social necessity. The research question that we investigated was, did the members of the theater performance team acknowledge any changes in the ways they listen to their local soundscape before and after the performances? The research question was explored through a focus group interview with the theater team members. Eight out of 12 individuals participated in the study voluntarily. Uh, and these were four actors and actresses, one musician, the director, the set designer, and the graphic designer. The interview took place at the theater venue where most performances had been held and lasted for about two hours. The data was analyzed following a thematic approach. Not surprisingly, a difference between the residents of the old town of Kurfu and the residents of other areas of the island became evident. The participants who lived outside the old town of Kurfu said that they had probably seen or heard the birds, but hadn't really paid any attention to them. They hadn't developed any special gaze, as one participant said. However, the residents in the old town had oral and visual contact with the birds, mainly from their childhood. They would see the birds flying, nesting, hanging off the edges, fallen on the ground, or they would hear their shrill sound. They highlighted that they developed knowledge about the birds through experience, but they didn't know the name of the birds or other scientific facts about them. All these issues were touched by one of the participants in the following words. I'd get under the bed to catch him, but he would live and fly here and there. I'd grab him and notice that he has very strong legs and claws, so much that if you let him go, he could hurt you. Perhaps because he was scared and would hold himself tight on you but he couldn't fly away by himself. I knew that you'd have to pull them high up or from a window. I found out only later that these birds do not belong to the family of shallows. The members of the theater team acknowledged that through their involvement in the play, were able to identify the swifts and distinguish them from swallows. They acquired a deeper understanding of Swift's functions and behaviors. And now they knew how to rescue a Swift that had fallen on the ground. However, we saw that not all participants developed the same depth of ecological knowledge about Swifts and their place in the ecosystem, perhaps due to their different level of involvement in the play. As mentioned before, the play made a direct, direct parallelism between the old Swift's weak legs and the old biologist's movement disability. This is something that the participants highlighted in the interview too. They said that they had become more aware and more sensitive to social exclusion. And they wondered how different life for people with disabilities must be. They also realized that when people do not allow diversity, they create an imbalance in society. In an analogous way, when they exclude the Swifts from the town, they create an imbalance in the local ecosystem. 
One of the participants developed deep empathy for the Swifts and imagined herself in their position. She acknowledged that there are many different views of the world, and she said, I try to think about what it feels like to be a bird and fly thousands of meters above the ground. The world of Swifts is different from our world. I realized how differently we see the same thing. Many participants highlighted that thanks to their involvement in the play, they developed a new specialized visual and auditory perception about human as well as other than human beings. They said that they started seeing and hearing their surroundings more attentively. For example, a participant mentioned that he would observe people's behaviors and actions towards disabled people, such as when parking at designated spaces. They also referred to the benefits of observation. A participant said noticing sounds can open a window in one's head. And they contrasted the experience of observation, which they gained from their involvement in the play, to the buzz of multiple indistinguishable sounds people tend to hear in their everyday life. When someone walks in the forest, they could not just look down watching their step, but they could listen to the leaves rustling, other birds, or the wind whistling through the tree branches. We found that the play triggered actions and realizations in the participants. One member of the theater team told the story of how, about a month after the performances, found a swift on the ground and tried to rescue it and asked the vet about it. Another participant expressed her desire to be actively involved in a similar musical theater project that could raise awareness on sea urchins, which are under extinction due to careless fishing. As for the various realizations triggered by the play, two participants highlighted theater's power to create compassion, which can lead to actions and behaviors. In their own words, it is hopeful that a performance can change one's consciousness and shape their personality. Some participants claim that on top of the Philharmonic bands and local food, Swifts are also part of Corfu's identity. It seems that they reached a new realization about what constitutes the, the identity of the island. They valued this musical theater play as part of the cultural heritage of Corfu, and they suggested that it should be preserved and performed in the future for the new generations. Participants agreed that the musical play conveyed the message that ecology is not just about nature, sorry, is not just about nature. Ecology, ecology, mm -hmm. ecology includes also humans and their behavior to fellow human beings. In their own words, ecology cannot but include humans. Ecology is also the message of the play about disability. Ecology is also the other fellow human being who is next to you, and what you do to them is equally important as to what you do to nature. Three main conclusions derived from our analysis. The first conclusion was that the musical play provided the theatre team members with opportunities for an increased perceptual differentiation and specificity regarding the Swifts as unique agents in their environment, producing what Gibson would refer to as perceptual learning. Another conclusion is that participants' words and actions manifested an extended ecological self as a result of the identifications they formed with disabled humans and the Swifts. According to Nas, humans reconnect with nature when they develop identifications with other than human beings. The participants develop feelings of empathy and solidarity, and through this, they acquired the sense of belonging in the same community with the other beings. Our third conclusion is that reports of actions of rescuing Swifts show how experience from the play 
was transferred to the local community. The conclusions reinforce the argument that musical theatrical play can be an effective tool. It can create those conditions which enable first the development of identifications and empathy with human and other than human beings, second, one's awareness of their local environment, and third, activism in the local community. Our conclusions could be shown as an expanding cycle, which is an adaptation of Nisser's perceptual cycle. The musical theatre play acts as a powerful, embodied, an emotionally infused source of knowledge, which may lead to a more specialized ecological perception of the human and other than human world. This specialized perception may in turn fuel an ever expanding awareness that could function as a natural motivator for local and global ecological actions. And now we show you a three of the pictures from our play. The two to the right are from the play itself. And the one to the left is from the educational activity that followed uh, uh, every performance. And we share uh, our references. And many thanks to you. Thank you for your attention.